Welcome everyone. We're now muted so that we can begin our service. Our opening music played by our music director and pianist David Chapman is My Lord, What a Morning, a spiritual arranged by H.T. Furley. Good morning. Welcome to Paint Branch Unitarian Universalist Church on this snowy Sunday. <clears throat> My name is Polly Pettit, and I am one of a team of worship associates who works with the minister and church staff in bringing you worship services. We're happy to be here together, even when it's best that we don't meet in person. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, Wherever your ancestors came from, whatever race, age, gender identification, or physical abilities, whatever device you're being piped in on, we're glad that you chose to join this conversation this morning. If you are using Zoom, please run your cursor around the perimeter of your screen to find the microphone icon and be sure to remain muted so we can all hear the speakers and the music. You may also find the option for switching between gallery view and speaker view. You'll probably want to choose speaker view. And a reminder that we are recording on Facebook Live and Zoom. Clicking on the bubble icon opens up the chat screen where you can read timely messages from our assistant church administrator, Phil Brown. Right now, I invite you to type into chat how many people are viewing from your screen. Please type one if it's just you. If you are visiting here for the first or second time, I invite you to post your name and contact information in chat so we can contact you later since we cannot greet you as we wish we could. After the service, we will have coffee hour breakout rooms we're delighted that our guest minister, Reverend Dr. Kiyama Rahman, will remain for a question and answer session in the main room. So at the end of the service, you'll see a pop-up with the option of joining a small group, which you may choose. If you don't press that option, you can remain in the large group for the discussion. And now it is my honor to welcome our guest minister, Reverend Dr. Kiyama Rahman, coming to us from St. Croix, Virgin Islands. Reverend Kiyama is the former director of contextual ministry at Meadville Lombard, and she served the UU Fellowship of St. Croix from 2012 to 2018. Inspired by the interfaith and social justice witness of UUism, Reverend Kiyama devotes her research to the richly diverse narratives of UU Black women and girls. 
She was the men's lecturer for 2020 and presented three lectures on Black UU women and Black UU clergy women. She's currently working on an anthology of Black Unitarian Universalist clergy women. Welcome, Reverend Dr. Rachman. Thank you, thank you. Here in this holy place, let us give ourselves to the spirit of the moment and knowing that much is beyond our ability to change, life still calls us to act in compassion and fairness wherever the opportunity presents itself. Let us seize the strength of the ritual, remember, renew, and relive the taste of the hard fought struggles in the human quest for justice. We are hungry for the lessons of the past and for guidance toward the promise of the future. May we be open to all that expands our awareness and welcome all to enter our embrace. Those are the words of the Reverend Tony Vincent, the third black woman to be ordained and fellowshiped as a Unitarian Universalist minister. May it be so and blessed be. I now invite longtime member of our church, Margaret Morrison to light our chalice. Margaret has contributed to services for Kwanzaa, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Sunday and sessions for the women's retreat. She's a staunch fan of our music and dance. She's confident that the young members will lead in fostering a more equal and just society. Margaret. Good morning. Please join me as I light the chalice. We light the chalice to celebrate Unitarian Universalism. This is the church of the open mind, the helping hands, the loving heart, and the radiant spirit. Ascendamos este caliz para celebrar el unitarismo universalismo. Esta y la iglesia de la mente abierta de las manos amigas, del amor, del corazón y del espíritu radiante. Thank you, Margaret. Good morning, my good people. I'm Chris McCann, your religious educator. It's a joy to be together on another snowy Sunday morning. Today's service is about pioneering Black women in Unitarian Universalism. When Reverend Dr. Rachman and I discussed this service, we thought it would be good to start with a Black woman pioneer that isn't necessarily rooted in Unitarian Universalism. And we both immediately thought of Amanda Gorman, the youth poet laureate who spoke at the inauguration. If you haven't seen it, please seek it out. I watch the recording frequently and it gives me chills every time. And when I watch it, I'm reminded that someone on Twitter said that even her hands are poetry. So if you watch it, perhaps put it on mute for a minute and just watch those poetic hands. She speaks beautifully and honestly about the harm, the potential for healing, the potential, the true potential of our country. She reminds us at the end that there is light if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. I also wanna lift up some current pioneering black women in Unitarian Universalism, because sometimes when I hear the word pioneering, I think of the past. And of course, there's pioneering happening all the time. Two black women in Unitarian Universalism in the wider world who are dear to my heart are the Reverend Dr. Natalie Fenimore, who began her career as a religious educator, and I believe served here at Paint Ranch. Also Jessica York, the Unitarian Universalist Association's Director of Congregational Life, who enthusiastically supports innovation in congregations, particularly family ministry. And lest, we believe, and lest we believe that Black women pioneers in Unitarian Universalism exist solely out there, I lift up paint branchers Carmelita Carter Sykes and Carol Carter Walker, who serve on the Council of Elders of Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism. 
I also lift up Ebony Contreras, who is pursuing a master's in leadership studies with a concentration in lay ministries at Meadville Lombard Theological Seminary. A few months ago, she created a Neo Church, which is an online faith community. Her community is called Sunstone Chapel. And if you want to get excited about the future of Unitarian Universalism, have a conversation with Ebony. We will soon hear a hymn written by Dr. Issei Barnwell, a Black Unitarian Universalist woman composer. She has brought her workshop, Building a Vocal Community, Singing in the African American Tradition, to participants all over the world. She was heard for many years in the ensemble Sweet Honey in the Rock, and in 1977, she founded the Jubilee Singers, a choir at All Souls Unitarian in DC. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Barnwell's hymn, number 1051, We Are, sung by Elizabeth Porter. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are our grandmother's prayers, and we are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We are mothers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters of dust and the sons of great visions. We're sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and the builders of nations. We're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers and we are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. We are mothers of courage and fathers of time. We are daughters of dust and the sons of great visions. We're sisters of mercy and brothers of love. We are lovers of life and the builders of nations. We're seekers of truth and keepers of faith. We are makers of peace and the wisdom of ages. We are our grandmother's prayers and we are our grandfather's dreamings. We are the breath of our ancestors. We are the spirit of God. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. We are. Thank you, Ebeth and Dr. Barnwell. My family came to Unitarian Universalism for the religious exploration program, but we also wanted to find a religion more welcoming, more socially conscious, and less dogmatic than our respective churches. I was especially glad to find a congregation that was not all white. I wanted my church, as I want, everything else in my life to be inclusive and committed to fairness and justice. The expansiveness of Unitarian Universalist sources and principles spoke to me then. Now there is a proposed eighth principle, which I support, journeying towards spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community 
by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. Our theology is important to me, but it's no longer the most important thing. The more involved we got in the activities of Paint Branch, the more I came to value the bonds we made with so many of you. I don't need to recount all the highs and lows, the changes and the tests. It's not only the lessons that I've learned about racism and social justice, it's the people that I've learned from. And the simple sharings resonate and last. The kitchen conversations, book discussions, auction dinners, and women's retreats. Through it all, the shared experiences with the women of color in this congregation have been a strong reason that I keep coming back. As a white person in the comfort of the majority, I can say that I came for the theology, but stay for the people, the diverse community of Paint Branch. According to a survey though, black people came to Unitarian Universalism for the theology. Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism is a spiritual home for black Unitarian Universalists. When they did a survey of what black UUs were looking for from their organizing collective, the survey assessment showed that black members tend to come, become a part of UU congregations because of the UU theology, not because of the community. Not to speak for anyone else, but I'm not surprised that black members don't come to church to be around a majority of white people. If you haven't read this, I would highly recommend the article about the survey. So here it is in the chat box. There certainly was no black communal experience for the women of color who joined Unitarian or Universalist congregations a century or more ago. I can only imagine what it must have been like for these women, some of them active in the earliest years of our religion when they were the only people of color in their churches. Their courage was both remarkable and overlooked. Would we as a congregation have supported and protected them? Would I have shared their writing, stood up with them, sung their songs? I hope the answer is yes. I can't relive the history, but I can honor the black women who broke through to forge a more diverse and loving Unitarian Universalism. I can do my part to make our PBUUC community safe and affirming for our members of color. I will try to help our community be as appealing as our theology. Our special music is Dream Variation from Three Dream Portraits, music by Margaret Bonds, lyrics by Langston Hughes. Margaret Bonds lived 1813 to 1972 and was an acclaimed composer and musician whose arrangements of spirituals are renowned for their syncopated rhythms, jazz chords, and ragtime influences. She performed as a pianist in concert with symphonies and for popular broadcast. She was lifelong friends with poet Langston Hughes and set many of his poems to music. We will hear one of her compositions spoken by Muriel Morrissey. To fling my arms wide in some place in the sun, to whirl and to dance, till the white day is done. Then rest at cool evening beneath a tall tree while night comes on gently, dark like me. That is my dream.
to fling my arms wide in the face of the sun, dance, whirl, whirl, till the quick day is done. Rest at pale evening, a tall, slim tree, night coming tenderly, black like me night coming tenderly black like me We began this morning gathering to speak their names. There were losses in 2020, and so I dedicate this homily, this presentation to three of those individuals that I lift up this morning. To my left is Elandria Williams, co-moderator of the Unitarian Universalist Association. In the middle, the Reverend Dr. Hope Johnson, mentor to many, friend to so many over the years. And then to my right is Betty Holcomb, member of First Unitarian Church of Chicago, a longtime anti-racist, anti-oppression and multicultural trainer and advocate and supporter we lift up your names, we speak your names. I have dubbed her Queen Mother Amy Scott because she is the earliest documented black woman affiliated with universalism, 1801. All we have is a name and that affiliation. Queen Mother Amy Scott, elder of black Unitarian Universalism, we lift you up. Frances Ellen Watkins Harper dubbed the Bronze Muse because of her prolific writings. She was one of the first black women to publish a short story and later a novel in 1892. She was active in many movements, the abolitionist movement, the suffragette, the temperance movement, the literary, Black literary movement, children's and the Negro women's club movement. She often traveled by herself during her continuous lectures for the Anti-Slavery Society of Maine and other societies. She also spoke to mixed race and gender groups, something quite extraordinary and unusual at that time. She was a member of First Unitarian Church of Philadelphia. An unusual alliance occurred between her and John Brown. She spent two weeks with Mary Brown, pictured here on the slide, along with the two children, during the course of his incarceration and his trial and his inevitable hanging. She wrote to him, she sent him money, she wrote to the other individuals that were incarcerated along with him. We lift her name and speak her name. Fanny Barrier Williams, active in the Negro Women's Club movement and a prominent speaker and activist. She spoke at several of the World Parliament of Religions and including the 1893 one in which she presented a talk, Religious Mission of the Colored Race. She was a member of All Souls Unitarian Church of Chicago. Williams fought against employment discrimination and segregated housing. She challenged the Chicago Women's Club, a premier women's reform organization after she was nominated 
for membership and the all white women's club did not want to integrate. In 1924, Williams was the first woman and black appointed to the board of the Chicago Public School. Speak her name, Maria Louise Baldwin. Her parents stressed the importance of education. She was hired in 1887 as an elementary school teacher at the prestigious interracial Agassiz Grammar School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. In 1889, she became the first black principal in Massachusetts. In 1916, she became the master or what is considered the superintendent, a position that she held for 40 years. Baldwin initiated the first parent teacher group in the Cambridge Public Schools and was the first administrator to utilize the services of a trained school nurse. Baldwin was a popular lecturer on women's suffrage, poverty, and history. She joined the Unitarian Church of the Disciples in Boston in 1907. As I stated, she was a popular lecturer and the first woman to deliver the annual George Washington Birthday Memorial in 1897. On February 12th, 2004, Agassiz Grammar School was renamed the Maria Louise Baldwin School. Speak their names. Florida Ruffin Ridley was born into a family of activists. Her mother, Josephine St. Pierre Ruffin, was a speaker, an editor, a women's rights and civil rights activist. Florida's father was a graduate of Harvard Law School and the first black judge in the North. Florida was the second black teacher in Boston public schools. She and her mother worked in partnership and although her mother was not a Unitarian, their partnership allowed them to start the first publication owned and operated by black women in the entire country called Women's Era. She was the founder of several organizations. She participated in the NAACP and was a founding member of Second Unitarian Church in Brookline, Massachusetts. The Coolidge Corner School in Brookline was renamed the Florida Ruffin Ridley School in 2020. Speak their names, Mary Jordan and Annie Bizzle Jordan Willis. Willis was the daughter of one of the first black universalist ministers, the Reverend Joseph F. Jordan. Together with her mother, Mary Jordan, the family was active in starting and sustaining the Suffolk Normal Training School in Virginia. Both parents, Joseph and Mary in 1902, heard the universalist missionary Quillen Shin preach and immediately decided they were universalists. In 1904, Joseph Jordan assumed the pastorate of St. Paul's Universalist Church and Mission School in Suffolk. That had begun in 1885 with pledges from the Universalist Convention. This became the life work of Mary and Annie when Reverend Jordan died in 1929. Annie and her mother took over the school. The church unfortunately folded, but the school maintained and continued into becoming the Jordan neighborhood house in the 1940s. Annie was devoted to the school until her retirement in 1974. Even in retirement, she continued to be involved and the day before she died, in 1977, she said to the newly appointed director of the school, watch out for my children. Speak their 
So Unitarian Universalist women responded to the call of the civil rights movement from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So you may recognize either this picture or the name or both. But it is possible that you do not recognize this name or this face. I introduce you to Margaret Mosley, a Black Unitarian Universalist from Barnstable, Massachusetts, a longtime activist. She was not able to participate in the 50 mile march from Selma to Montgomery in 1965. She was 63 years old and suffered from an arthritic condition. But she arrived in Selma a few days after the march with a group of six women from the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. You see her depicted on the slide in the upper um, center with Dr. King. She is presenting a check to him. You see her below that picture. She is representing the internet, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. She went supporting voter participation and registration in the South. She visited the Luizo family and extended her condolences. Mark Morrison Reed states in his book, The Selma Awakening, quote, Mosley was followed. She was harassed. She stared down Sheriff Clark on the courthouse stairs. She recalls as she and another member headed to the airport, attempts were made by another vehicle to run them off the road and thoughts of Viola Luizzo's murderous demise were played out in her head as they successfully eluded the attempt on their lives. Speak her name, Edna Mae Griffin. She was called the Rosa Parks of Iowa because she led protests in 1948, two decades before Rosa Parks. The protest was in front of the Katz drugstore where they refused service to blacks in Iowa City, Iowa. And Edna Mae Griffin was not having it. She was honored later with a plaque that stood at the site where the drugstore previously stood. If you note the slide, the beautiful building below, that building with its apartments and retail stores is named after our own Edna Mae Griffin. This 135 year old building is a testimonial to her courage and to her work and her endeavors toward justice and education of the people. There are many black women serving and responding to their call for steward leadership. Within the UUA alone, the Unitarian Universalist Association, I lift up several of them. Reverend Lauren Smith, who serves as the Director of Stewardship and Development. Below is the Dr. Janice Marie Johnson, who serves now as the Co-Director of Ministries and Faith Development, along with the Reverend Sarah Lammert. We also have three other individuals, Tequina Boston, who has served for many years during, doing anti-racism work, and she is now the Director of Multicultural Growth and Witness. In the last couple of years, the Reverend Alicia Ford, who had been previously a parish minister and previously served um, as um, um, in a position in the UUA, but she is now the director of international programs. And finally, you heard Jessica York's name mentioned earlier. She is now the director of congregational life and previously served in um, faith formation with the UUA. Black women have recognized since emancipation from slavery that education is a tool toward equality, justice, and so 
Education is highly represented among Unitarian Universalist women. I just captured in this collage a few that I want to speak to and lift up their names. To my left upper corner, many of you may recognize Melissa Harris Perry. She is a um, political narrator and commentator. She is a professor at Wakefield University. She is a published author. I could go on and on. She was one of our speakers at um, the Unitarian Universalist GA a few years ago and delivered an amazing presentation. Across from her is Takia, uh, Takia um, Alamine, and she has a doctorate in um, dance theory. She is on the leadership body of Blue and is very active and very involved and has been a UU since early, her early college days. Below her is Dr. Stephanie Mitchum. She is, has a dual appointment at the University of South Carolina where she serves in the Department of Religion and the Department of African American and African Studies also is a prolific author, and she has served on the board of Mebio Lombard Theological School. In the center is the Reverend Dr. Joanne Braxton. Joanne served as a professor before becoming a minister. She also is a prolific author, and her focus was Black women. She has published um, and edited a number of anthologies and publications as she now serves dual stand, uh, standing in both UCC, United Church of Christ, and also Unitarian Universalism, and comes to us bringing her gifts. And below, finally, is the Dr. Dolores Cross. Dolores served as president at two universities, one in Chicago and the other in uh, Atlanta, Morris Brown College. This is just a surface representation of the kind of talent among Black women and girls that is represented. You heard Chris mention Dr. Issei Barnwell. Not only does she have the education, but she has the experience. She is musician and vocalist extraordinaire. Previously was a part of Sweet Honey in the Rock. I've seen her present in a group of 100 individuals and we come out sounding like this choir that's been in formation for years. She is absolutely amazing. She is a member of All Souls in DC. The Reverend Dr. Rosemary Bray McNatt, most of you know her not only as a, um, as a minister, but she, is also now the president of Star King School of Ministry and is a published author as well. Two of her books are depicted here, Unafraid of the Dark and Loved One, The Black Child's Book of Prayer. We have some talent among us that is just extraordinary. But I want to also shift a little bit now and talk about our young adults who are about keeping it real. So I have here in the upper left, this is the Reverend Sarah Green. She is the Youth and Young Adult Program Manager for UUA, is doing an amazing job. Next to her is Nicole Presley, who during the um, voter campaign, she actually served as the national organizer for the UUA's um, um, vote campaign and she has been promoted to some position and I, um, it's escaping me right now, but truly her track record um, made it possible for her to step into this new leadership role. Below Nicole is Ayana Stringer. Ayana Stringer as a child was a member of Thurman Hamer Ellington UU congregation in Atlanta where I began my faith formation as a Unitarian Universalist. She was a little child. She is now a grown woman serving as the director of youth 
organizations and ministry at the UU Congregation of Atlanta. Her father, Ayana, and her daughter represent three generations of Black Unitarian Universalists. She is not the only second and third generation Black UUs that I came across in my encounters and interviews. Next to her is India Danielle. India served a number of years at UU Congregation uh, Shelter Rock as the Youth and Young Adult Coordinator. She has stepped out recently pursuing her passion in herbal medicine. If you want to check her out, Blue's website speaks about her passion and her endeavors. Again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I just wanted for you to hear and think about the treasures, the talents that we have among us within Unitarian Universalism. And of course, you have your own rock stars right here at Prank Branch um, at the Harper Jordan Memorial Symposium in 2019. You see your own rock stars, Carol Carter Walker and Carmelita Carter Sykes. They were bestowed these beautiful stoles that you see as elders who have served Unitarian Universalism over time and their contributions and accomplishments were acknowledged at the uh, symposium. And so kudos to them and the other elders that were acknowledged. One of the things that I'm moving into now is a recognition that the research and scholarship needs to be gathered and consolidated in a place. So I am creating the Black Unitarian Universalist Women and Girls website, Sister Source. So we will be gathering the information and inviting folks once we debut the website. My final slide is to mention the vision that I have. So my initial focus has been black women because there literally was no research on black women and girls. And so as I've begun to do this over the years and it's been almost 22 years since literally the day I came into Unitarian Universalism, read Mark Morrison Reed's book, Black Pioneers in a White Denomination. And I thought, this is amazing. Now, where are the black Unitarian Universalist women? And because I didn't see them, I had to create this literature, this research, this body of scholarship. Eventually, what I want to do is gather the scholarship for UU women of color and eventually UU women in general so that we have all of this history that is recognized. So on this Sunday, we have gathered as people of faith in our separate locations, in our spaces made sacred by our presence to celebrate and explore the presence of Black Unitarian Universalist women and girls. And while it is Black History Month, and I wanted to honor our stories, however, this is about more than Black History Month. This is about decentering whiteness and challenging white supremacy by bringing Black women and girls from the margins to the center of Unitarian Universalism. May these stories inspire us to find more stories. May it be so, Ashe, and blessed be. Thank you so much, Reverend Rachman, for your sharing your scholarship and speaking their names. We'll have a lot to discuss in the breakout rooms. We'll now move into Joys and Sorrows with Lynn Lewison. As we gather in community, we carry life's hurts and its great joys. And we think it is still helpful to provide an opportunity for attendees to share these joys and sorrows. So during this online service, I invite you to share your joys and sorrows in the chat. And I will lead a meditation after the intonation. And now David Chapman will play Hush Hush, Somebody's Calling My Name, 
a spiritual arranged by Cliff Harton. Now let us take a few moments to acknowledge all that has been shared, as well as those joys and sorrows that remain unshared and yet on our minds. In this quiet time, may our hearts open to hope and healing, may our minds open to hope and possibility. The mission of this church carries on in these uncertain times and is more important than ever. We are so grateful to have the financial support of our members and friends. Please give as generously as you are able. This Sunday's offering can be received as indicated in the chat bar. Our offertory music is Lord, I just can't keep from crying an African-American spiritual arranged by Florence Price. Florence Price lived 1888 to 1953. She was the first African-American woman composer to receive national recognition. She wrote over 300 compositions, including symphonies, violin and piano concertos, art songs, and arrangements of spirituals and African-American folk songs. Her symphony in E minor was the first symphonic work by an African-American woman to be performed by a major symphony orchestra in 1933. Here is Lord, I Just Can't Keep From Crying, sung by Elizabeth Porter.
My closing words are from my writing mentor, Reverend Dr. Mark Morrison Reed, from one of his books titled, Darkening the Doorways, Black Trailblazers and Missed Opportunities in Unitarian Universalism. He says, quote, our challenge today is to develop a culturally inclusive vision that is grand and hopeful enough to inspire and a way of being that is open and welcoming to all races and cultures, Asian, Native American, Hispanic, and those with roots in Africa. As we build in the present for the future we dream of, the only reliable foundation is one that honestly acknowledges, grieves, and celebrates the past. Otherwise, we will remain captive to beliefs and behavior that have not served liberal religion well. Well spoken, Reverend Dr. Mark Morrison Reed. May it be so and be blessed as we prepare now for our closing hymn, Fuente de Amor, Spirit of Life. It's time to end our service for today. After Margaret Morrison has extinguished the chalice, you'll have the option of joining a small coffee hour breakout room or remaining in this session for a discussion of today's homily with the Reverend Dr. Rachman. Margaret? At the beginning of the service, I lit the chalice with intention. I imagine its iridescent flame radiating hope, its light illuminating our UU principles, its flickering candle fire irradiating the warmth of our community. I extinguish the chalice flame, this light with intention. Words from the Bhagavad Gita written in 500 BC remind us, and I quote, that it is love that leads to light. And it is hope that he who has a good will and strives is never lost. And that in the battle for eternal life, there can never be a defeat unless we run away from the battle." End of quote. I have repurposed these sentiments to cast light on the battle being waged in our world today. And though I extinguish this candle, 
I do not extinguish that light, that fire, that hope that we each possess in our inner spirit. Don't run away from the battle that seeks to destroy our representative democracy. Bring your candle of intention into the battle. Let love and light become fused. <laughs>